What's up, Hoopers? Did you tear your meniscus or injure your meniscus or someone had said that you have issues with your meniscus? Today, we're gonna go over all things meniscus. My name is Dr. Marco Lopez from The Basketball Doctors and our goal from The Basketball Doctors is to empower the basketball community with evidence-based information of all things basketball, rehab and performance. This information is just for educational purposes, not medical advice. If you need medical advice, contact your local physical therapist, physician, or send us a DM to see how we can help you. But let's just jump into the topic of meniscus. So here's your meniscus. The meniscus, as you probably have heard of, is one of the most common injuries for people to have. And most of the time, the meniscus injury is not from a traumatic injury, but just kind of age, wear and tear as you get older, that's part of the process. But let's just break down a meniscus. So here's the meniscus. It's the fibrocartilage cartilage between this bone here, the femur, and the tibia here. It provides that uh, good source of shock absorption, cushion, and stability of the knee. So when we talk about the meniscus, these provide that shock or cushion for the knee whenever you're jumping, running. That's why if you probably heard of someone talk about a meniscus pain or a tear, they have trouble running, jumping, not so much weightlifting, it's more of that load. So that load, because this is that cushion. I usually tell people the meniscus is kind of like, if you ever try to put um, a screw in the wall, it's that washer. That washer provides that stability for that screw to go in that wall. So think about the meniscus the same way. And when we talk about meniscus, there's two menisci. So there's a medial and lateral. So as you can see here, they're pretty big, the meniscus. So when you injure part of your meniscus or tear, of it, tear a piece of it, it's only a part of the meniscus because there's so much of it. So we're gonna talk about the actual meniscus inside of it. So inside of the meniscus, we kind of break it up into two zones. There's a white zone and a red zone. The white zone is not vascular, so it means there's not great blood supply. But the red zone has good blood supply. And that's key when we talk about later about the surgical procedures that they use. But the red zone is usually in the outside, the peripheral. White zone is in the inside. The reason we talk about red zone, white zone, blood supply, because when there's blood supply to a thing, that improves its chance to heal. So if you tear it, whenever, let's say, you want to have surgery, they could repair the one with the red zone. And we'll talk more about that later. But, so we talked about the red and white zone. We talked about how big the meniscus is. We're gonna talk about the differences between left and right. So left, sorry, left and right, sorry, medial versus lateral. So sometimes people break it up to left and right. So your medial, which is the left part of it, is more of that, uh, we're talking about stability of the knee joint. The right side, or the lateral, is more of that force transmission. So whenever people have issues with the medial meniscus, they'll have more instability per se, versus in the lateral meniscus, they have more problems with direct pressure in. So that's kind of like the main goal of the meniscus, to provide that cushion and stability. So a lot of the cushion goes in the outside, a lot of the stability comes from the inside. Now we're gonna talk about what happens if you injure it and how you injure it. So let's say you injured your meniscus and it usually happens with one, if it's a traumatic injury versus non-traumatic injury. A traumatic injury is you're running and you do some deceleration and you twist. Any twisting kind of motion might tear your meniscus uncontrollably. So let's say you're running and you do a quick twist and your leg kind of does a little pivot and shift, you might injure that meniscus. Or if you go into some hyperextension or some increased rotation with some hyperextension, might injure that meniscus. So if you injure your meniscus, normally what's gonna happen is your knee will swell up because it's an intra-articular uh, injury. So it's inside the knee capsule inside here. So your knee might swell up. However, for those non-traumatic meniscus tears, meaning like as time goes, out, goes on and as you get older, it's part of the normal age process, the meniscus might tear or might get smaller. So what happens on those, you might not have a specific injury, but sometimes you might flare it up. Let's say the meniscus was already torn and you do a twisting mechanism and it flares that up. That's another possibility why you might have that meniscus tear symptoms. So that's how you would tear it. So those are the two ways. 
One, we have a traumatic and non-traumatic. Traumatic, you land or you twist, some rotational, similar to the ACL versus non-traumatic. As you get older, normal age changes, you end up having some meniscus degeneration. How do you know if you torn your meniscus? So there's a lot of symptoms we kind of look at. One, pain with walking. So you might have pain with walking or pain with loading of the knee. Another thing is joint line pain. That pain should be around the joint line. So if you see the knee here, it's gonna be on that joint line. So not on the kneecap, but more in the joint line between the femur and the tibia. Another thing too is one of the most important symptoms is locking. So when we talk about locking is here's your meniscus, it's torn, and then it goes inside the knee joint and it locks up the knee joint. And that's the most important symptom because that's a mechanical symptom and that would require surgery most of the time because that meniscus that goes inside the knee joint will always lock up on your knee and locking up means you can't really move your knee. So that's one of the big symptoms that we look for. So to kind of recap again, symptoms are pain in the joint line, pain with weight bearing, walking, you might hear some clicking, but the most important symptom you have to look out for is mechanical symptoms of locking because if you have locking, you might need surgery. If you don't, then you probably don't need surgery because a lot of the studies have shown right now that meniscus tears rehab non-operatively through physical therapy versus operatively through a meniscectomy. They've shown actually physical therapy non-operative have better results down the line. So remember, if you have a meniscus tear, it might hurt a little bit in the beginning, let it run its course for the first two, three weeks, then start working on your rehab. Don't just jump the gun into having surgery because of the results they've shown. Non-operative is sometimes better than operative. Um, so that's kind of the breakdown of the meniscus. So as we mentioned, the meniscus is that cushion for the knee. We have two meniscus, uh, lateral, medial. The lateral one has more for that load transmission. Medial is more that stability. We have a white and a red zone. Depending on what zone it is, it depends on your surgery. So to go back, if you need surgery on it, if it's in a red zone, they could possibly repair it because there's three types of surgeries. There's the meniscus repair. What happens is when it's in the red zone, they could repair the meniscus versus a meniscectomy where they remove the meniscus that is torn versus a meniscus replacement where you have a big chunk of the meniscus torn and they'll try to replace it with a cadaver. So that plays a factor in the, how we mentioned red and white zones, but check out uh, one of our videos. We're gonna go over that more into detail. But, and in regards to rehab, like I said, guys, as long as you don't have mechanical symptoms of locking, you could rehab it non-operatively through physical therapy. So hopefully that answered a lot of your questions on Meniscus 101. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, hit the like, subscribe button, share this with friends and family, and let's ball for life.